guys, it's Mei Mei, and today we're making a super fun, easy recipe album that I think you're really going to like. It's a mini album, but I'm going to make it recipe so you can make it whatever you want. Also, if you would like to participate in an upcoming, a really quick upcoming recipe swap using the patterns I'm going to do today, be sure to watch till the end because I'm going to give you some information about how to get more information about that swap and how to participate. Okay, we got this paper in last week. I was swooning over it. My brain was slipping like crazy about what I wanted to do with it, and I cannot wait to show you. So we'll come back to the paper in a minute, but I'm going to show you how I'm going to build my recipe book. So for your recipe book, you're going to need a piece of paper or cardstock, rather, that's going to be your recipe page or your mini album pocket page. That's how we're going to create this with all pocket pages, okay? So you're going to need a piece that is eight and a half long by six and three-fourths tall, okay? Or whichever way you want to put that, but eight and a half by six and three-fourths. And don't worry, we'll have a blog post with all this information linked in the description below. Okay, so what you want to do in your scoreboard is on your eight and a half inch side, you want to score it at four inches here, and you want to score it at eight and a half. Super, super easy. Now we're going to make another score mark that's really just for reference. And how we're going to do that is we're going to turn this piece in our scoreboard one turn, okay? And we're just going to come over here to the edge and we want to score it at three fourths of an inch. This is just for reference to make building these pocket pages easy. All right, that's all you need to do. Now we're just going to do a little trimming and some folding and some gluing and all that kind of stuff. So let me get some scissors. Okay, so what you want to do now, this is so good, you can see this really well. This little section right here, we do not need, okay? So I'm gonna cut that away. And I'm actually gonna cut the score mark away. You guys ask me a lot of times if we cut the score mark away or if we cut in the ditch or what have you. I'm actually cutting that score mark away, okay? Now we need to make two more little snips which you can make this snip at the same time you do that cutoff, but I like to do it in sections so you can understand exactly what I'm doing. We want to take a little bit of bulk out of our little binder here. So what we're going to do is take and just do an angle snip on one end, like so, and an angle snip on the other, just to the score line. See that? And that's your page. That's how easy this is to make. Seriously, I love ease, right? Okay, now what we want to do, I have my page a little bit upside down. Now we want to fold this piece in and crease it using our bone folder. So I'm just going to fold that down and then I'm going to run my bone folder over and crease it. Now I'm using black here because I just think it'll be pretty with that paper pack, but you can use any color you want that'll match whatever paper you chose, okay? Then we're going to fold this guy over to that and just crease the middle. Now, remember how I told you this mark on the end is just a reference mark? We're not gonna be folding this at all. I just wanted something there to show me where I'll be poking holes later, all right? So now, get ready for ease because it's as easy as it gets. We're gonna glue this shut. Here's how you're gonna glue. You're gonna glue on this flap here that we created for as a tab, and then we're gonna glue this. Now, the reason I'm gluing this at the bottom, one reason is it's gonna be a pocket, but I really want glue there to be a support, okay? Because that's where I'm gonna poke my holes and that's gonna be what holds my album together because I'm gonna use metal rings to do that. So that, just by doing that right there, what I get is extra stability from gluing that together, okay? I already love that it's two sheets of cardstock, so that gives me some extra stability, and then adding the glue even more. You could totally just put a sticky tape here if you wanted, and even here on the flap, but I'm just gonna use glue today. All right, so there is the main body of our page. Now, I want to punch it with a punch. I'm gonna use a two inch circle punch. You don't have to. You can really use any kind of punch you want with this. It doesn't have to be the two inch circle, but I just like the way this looks on the end of my pocket. So what I'm gonna do is just slide this guy in just about, not even quite a third of my circle, and I'm eyeballing top to bottom, and then I'm gonna press that. Ooh, it flew across the ring. There we go. And that will be my pocket page done. That easy, guys. We'll come back to holes in a few minutes, okay? Now let's talk about what's going inside. All right, on the inside or your pullout piece for your little pocket page, I'm going to make a piece that is six by three and seven eighths, and I'll tell you why. Six inches is because I want it to be exactly the length from the score mark to the end because I want you to be able to see this at the end of my little pullout section, but three and seven eighths because I need it to have just a little bit of room 
to pull out of that pocket easily, okay? So I'm gonna slice this down to three and seven eighths. I already had it at six, and I'll show you what I mean. If you make it a quarter of an inch smaller than the pocket, it's gonna slide out too easy because this is gonna be the edge of our album. We don't want it to have a super easy slip, but we do want it to go in and out easy enough that we're not having to fight it, okay? So you see how that lands in there just like that? Pretty cool, huh? All right, now what I'm gonna do is use one of my favorite punches. Y'all know how much I love this large angle punch. So I'm gonna put this guy in here and turn this into a big old tag. See that? A big old tag. And then I'm gonna place it inside here and establish my hole. And now we're gonna do some hole punching. So I'm just gonna put, put that in until it meets. And it might go down a little bit further, but it's not gonna go far because you've glued this shut. So I'm gonna put that there and I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm just going to make a circle here for where I wanna poke my hole, okay? And you want your hole to be further away from the top you don't want it right at the edge because it'll tear out over time. So put it as close to this circle, this half circle as you can. And I'm going to punch that. Now, the reason I did it like that is because I'm just going to let this be what dictates the rest of the holes I'm going to do. Okay. Now you have to decide. I'm using this guy right here that has all these different sizes. You have to decide what you're going to put at the end of yours to be the pullout. You could put ribbon. You could, you could just put paper down here, just staple paper on the edge. You could put baker's twine and that's how you decide what size hole. I'm going to go with the 3 because that way I can do baker's twine or ribbon. And I'm just going to line this up to that little spot, punch that out. And now all of my tags are gonna get punched in the same place, okay? So this will be my template for that. So I'm just gonna put this guy back in here. Now then, let me show you this. Um, this section is where I'm gonna poke my other holes, okay? So if you're gonna be doing the swap with us, don't poke these holes. We've decided in the swap, it's better for you not to poke the holes and let the person who gets it poke their own holes so they all are in the same spot. So if you're gonna be mailing these desks for the swap, don't poke these holes. I'll talk about that again in the video I'm gonna do at the end of this one. But if you're making this at home, you need to know how to do it. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna come in three eighths of an inch. And let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm, let me do it the other way so you can see it better. So from the edge of this cardstock, Okay, I'm gonna use my ruler and I'm gonna use the inside section, those little grids on the inside, and I'm gonna lay this down at three eighths of an inch from the center. So I've just lined that up to the edge. It's probably super hard for you guys to see that, but I've just gone one, two, three eighths and lined that up. And now I'm just gonna put this on an even inch mark here so I can get my measurements, okay? Now I'm gonna come down an inch from the top and make a mark. And I'm gonna go, gonna go up, let me try that again. I'm gonna go up an inch from the bottom and make a mark, okay? So it's pencil marks, I can see them. I've got another little mark right there that doesn't belong. So I can see these little marks. I'll darken them in so I can see them even better. And now those will be the spots where I punch my holes for the rings, okay? So I'm gonna put this back into my hole punch and I'm gonna center that dot inside of my 3 16 hole punch. Get that to fall out and then center this dot over it. Now, the thing is, this one page will now become the template for all other holes that I'm gonna do. That way, all my holes will match up. Instead of me doing all that measuring again, I'm just gonna use this as my template. So when I make my other pages, I'll line them all up and poke them, and same with my tags. Um, let me show you what I've already done so far. So I've already made these pages. I have not done the hole punching here, but I wanna show you what I mean by it being my template. So I would take this piece and lay it on top of this one and either trace where those circles are or just put my hole punch over it and punch it at the same time. And that's how I get all my holes in the same spot. The same with here. And let me show you, I would like for these to match up. I'm kinda, I would like for these to be kinda in the same spot. So what I'm gonna do is use this one as my little template. I moved the wrong one, I should move this one. Use this one as my template so when I put my hole punch in there, I'll know exactly where to punch to make everything the same. Now for the purposes of this album I'm making today, I'm only gonna make five pages, but when you if you participate in our recipe swap, um, we will be making 10 pages. And I'll explain all that in the second video. If you're watching this later and that swap is over, I'm sorry I keep mentioning it, but you're gonna love this little album anyway. It's super fun to make. All right, let's hole punch. So now I've got my little pencil marks and I know exactly where to put my hole punch to. So I'll just place this inside and line it up here. And now they're not gonna be absolutely perfect, but they're gonna be pretty close by doing it this way. 
Okay, so there's my pockets there. Look how close those are. Isn't that good? There's my pockets. Now I want to make the rest of my tags for inside. If you have any of the Not Your Mama's cardstock from Brutus Monroe, this is a great place to use that for these pocket pieces because this is where my recipes are going to live on these sheets and pulling them in and out over time and using them on my counter, what have you, to, use, to make the recipe. These, this is a great place for a good, thick cardstock. So if you have something thick that you can use, it's a good place to do it. Maybe not a chipboard. It's a little too thick for a chipboard, but perfect for a good thick cardstock. Okay, so I made those guys up and now I'm just gonna take this piece and let it be my template. And I'm just gonna hold it like that. You might not can see that hole very well, but I can see it in the light. And I'm just gonna hold this over it and punch it in the same spot. You could punch multiples at a time, not just one at a time. But the reason I'm doing one at a time is so if I slip, I have less chance of slipping by just doing one over the top of another one. And again, we don't do perfect around here. So if it's not perfect, it's all right. All right, so I'm gonna load these in here and I'll show you what the album will look like completely put together before we decorate it. That's nice, that fit in there really nice. I want it to be a little snug. I don't want it to be too slippy like we talked about. Okay, so there's all my pages with all my little recipe cards in there. And then, now, I'm gonna use one and a half inch rings on this one because this one's only gonna be five pages to start with. If you participate in our swap, you'll be getting two inch rings but I'm gonna use these one and a half inch for here. Um, you can always use bigger rings if you want, so you can add more and more, more and more pages. That's perfectly fine. And can you see how cute this would be for any album you wanted to do? It does not have to be a recipe album. It'd be super cute for any one. Now I'm gonna show you something else I'm going to do, and it might be something you wanna do, you might not, but I wanna show you this step as well. I'm gonna take some chipboard and cut pieces to be a cover and a back. So let me show you how to do that. So I have made for myself two pieces of chipboard that are six and three fourths by four, the same as my little pocket pieces. So this is going to just cover. I didn't want it to hang over the edge or anything. It's just gonna cover. So I need to poke holes. So I'm gonna come over here. And since I use this as my template, I'm gonna grab one out of here and use it as my template as well. So I think what I'll do this time is trace them out. So that way it'll be easier to do. I won't have to hold all this bulk together. So I'm just gonna trace and poke my holes. This is an album you guys are gonna be able to make for any occasion. Like, can you imagine having it for like Christmas Eve photos, graduation, little album just for graduation, um, a wedding album, just a little wedding. I mean, who knows? You can make this for any occasion. And it's gonna be able to hold a lot of pictures and you're gonna be able to add to it over the years, which is one thing I really like because sometimes if we make a mini album that's glued together or bound together, we can't always add to it. And that's kind of cool about this one that we can. All right, let's see what it's gonna look like. Let's go back and put this paper back or put this page back. So easy, I love easy. All right, there's that. And then we close it up and flip it around and put the back on. All right, and then we'll place the back on. And you'll see what the album's gonna look like before it's decorated this way. So this is what will be my little recipe album. It's really cute. And I'll be able to open it like this and lay the recipes out nice and flat. Of course, they'll come out of here for me to use, but my pictures and things will be here. So let's talk about how we're gonna decorate the pages. So I've gone through the paper pack and I've pulled out five sheets of cardstock. They are all sheets that I can use front and back of. So like here's the front and here's the back. There's the front there's the back. The reason I've done that is I don't want to use cut aparts for this, okay? So I wanted to make sure I could have pieces I could flip over. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this down to three and three-fourths of an inch, okay? I'm cutting them in stacks of two so I can do less cuts and get more done. So there's that. Now watch how this works out. This is really cool, okay? So I've got that in three and three-fourths. I'm going to turn this to the 12-inch side, and I'm going to cut it down to five and three-fourths, my first piece, okay? Then my second piece, I'm gonna cut to five and three-fourths as well. I wanna show you what's gonna happen. When you when you pick out five pieces of the cardstock, okay, you end up getting 10 pieces, which is what you want, because you have five pages you wanna cover front and back, and you get these little guys. And let me show you where you can use those. So here's my 10 pieces here that I cut, and then this is five pieces of these. Now to do what I wanna do with these, you'll need five more, but let me show you where to get them from from the same pieces of paper that you used, you're gonna have those little decorator strips on the end. Cut those away. This is kind of cool, okay? So cut these away like so. 
lay that in there so I can swipe up the edge. All right. And you want to get all of them, all that you used. You'll need all five of them. And what I'm going to do is use one of these as a template to get the same length. Look at that, how perfect. I'm going to lay this on and just use my scissors and snip and snip. And that will get me the same amount and the same patterns, okay? Not that big of a deal. It's just a cool way to not waste any paper, like really use a lot of that paper. So like same thing, I'm going to just grab one of these guys. It doesn't, you don't have to use a different one every time. I'm just going to, so I'm going to lay it on that paper just like so. I'm going to slice here and down here. And there's two. Here I'm going to do multiples at a time. I'm just going to line these up. Lay this in like so. Snip there and snip here. Okay. And then I got one more to do. So that gets me 10, all from those same pieces of paper. And look what I have left. There's enough to keep going. Like I hardly used any of that. That's all I've used of the paper pack so far is those little strips. All right, let's go back to one of our pages. Okay, so back to our page. So this is one of the pieces we just cut and it's going to mat this page. Notice I have a little edge around on all sides, but here I have this little guy to contend with. And let me show you how we're gonna do it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna line this up side to side even, okay? And then we're gonna press this down onto our work surface so that they're flush with each other. Don't worry about any of this right now, okay? Flip this over, and then we're gonna make a trace. We're gonna trace with our pencil, just like this, okay? Now we can punch it, and it will work. And the reason it will work is because we already cut this page down to be um, an eighth of an inch smaller all the way around of our page. So when we go to put this on, watch what's gonna happen, it's gonna lay perfectly where we want it because all that math is done for us. Isn't that cool? So now what we can do, we don't have to um, even use our page anymore. We can just let this be our guide and we need to run through and mark and punch all of these pieces. Okay, now for the fun part. We're gonna glue these pieces down. Now you should end up with one of each side showing. So just pay attention to what you're putting where and also pay attention to the ones that have wording on them. You wanna make sure you're putting those in the right direction. So that's why I started this one like this. And you might wanna go through and pick out all the ones you have that have words on them. That may be the only one I have with words. You just flip through. Because I wanna go ahead and place those so I don't end up kind of locking myself into one position. That's all. Okay, so now I can flip this over and keep going. Something else to pay attention to is when you're going to put a page on the back side of this, don't just flip it like this or just, you know, flip it over like this. Go ahead and flip it like this so you know you're putting your next pattern on correctly. Like this little guy, it doesn't really matter because this page goes either way because these they're up and down. So you just want to kind of keep an eye on that just in case you have a piece that is um, orientation specific. But you guys know with me, I never do a project that I don't mess that up somehow. So I'm sure somewhere in this book, I will mess that up. <laughs> but if we can keep from it, at least I can give you a tip every now and then. Okay, so remember these little strips? I thought this would be cute. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to lay this guy in where I want it to go. It's gonna be centered in the middle of that, okay? I probably won't use this color against this busy paper, but anyway, I wanna show you that. Then I'm just gonna flip it over while I've got it where I want it and draw my circles in. So I'm just gonna create myself another template. That's all I'm gonna do. All right, so back to my hole punch. And here, I'm just gonna run in and punch that hole on both sides. Cool beans. Okay, now I'm gonna use it for my template for these guys. Now you can trace like we've been like we've been talking about or like we've been doing, or you can just hold these like this and punch them. Okay, now all we're gonna do is just take these guys and pick where you want it. That little candy's cute with that, but I think I like the green with the candy stripes over there. So I'm just gonna put some glue on here and line those holes up. Now this is not gonna be perfect. This is kind of fiddly work. Don't stress, as long as your holes are open enough for your um, rings to go through, that's all you care about. And isn't that cute just to add a little color and we don't waste anything? I know you guys love when we don't waste anything. All right, I'm gonna run through and glue these guys down. Now this part is extra, it does take a little extra time and you don't have to do it. But what I really like about it and why I would encourage you to consider it is number one, no waste on these little pieces. And number two, it just adds a little more reinforcement to your holes 
because this way you end up with four pieces of cardstock glued together as your binder support. So pretty good idea. I cannot get over the cuteness and the ease of these pages. Oh, I've got two that match. Let's flip that one over. So look how cute that is. I love it. Show you both sides. Neato, right? And the ends are all covered. So cool. All right, now let's work on our cover. So I know you've had all you can take of this with me and my buffalo check fascination, but I'm in love with it and I'm gonna use the buffalo check for this. And here's how I'm gonna do it. I'm going to cover both my front and my back in buffalo check because then I have place to decorate on top of. But I'm just gonna do this. You could cut your piece of cardstock down to match, no problem. I'm just going to run glue on this, glue it down to my paper and then trim around it with either your scissors or your craft knife. I'm gonna use my craft knife, but I know my friend Brenda does hers like this and she'll just use her scissors. So if that's all you got, use it. And again, you could just cut a piece down. It's four by six and three fourths, but I just did it like this. All right, before I do anything else, I'm gonna run through and poke these holes just before I cover the other side. So I'll have holes to get through on the other side when I cover these up again. If that makes sense, that didn't feel like it made sense, but I think you'll see. So we can go ahead and poke these and then I'm gonna cover the insides. My inside's gonna be this plaid. I just think that'll be cute and give me a good base for um, anything I wanna put on it. So I'm just gonna flip this over and repeat the process I just did. So that's my back inside, put my pages there. There's my front inside. This is so cute, it's turned out really cute. Okay, so you can decide what you wanna do now. You can work on your cover or you can work on your pages in here. I think I'm gonna work on these because I'm gonna have to do a little work and show you what I mean. So let me get started on these. So for my next step here, or for my next trick, <laughs> here's what I'm gonna do. I have cut some pieces of cardstock. These pieces are three and one fourth by three and three fourths. Okay, and then the black pieces are three and a half by four. So they're just a little bit bigger. So this will mat on top of here. My plan is to lay this out something like this. I'm gonna have this white piece like this and I'm gonna place this like this, okay? And I'm gonna stamp on here. I'll show you what I'm gonna stamp. The reason I'm gonna make this album in this way is because I'm gonna participate in the recipe swap. So I'm gonna make this one a giveaway. So if you're watching this video and you've been paying attention, be sure to comment below something you love about this album. That's all you gotta do to enter. It's open internationally to anybody. So comment below something you like about this album and that's your entry. And we will come back through and scroll through the comments and stop. And wherever it stops, that's who will win this album. And I will do that by our next live show, that's when I'll do that. So by next Thursday, okay? So I'm gonna put this one aside and I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Because I'm gonna make this a giveaway, what I thought would be nice is if I showed them where to put their photo. This, And I'm not gonna call this a recipe album because whoever wins this can put whatever they want in there. I'm gonna use my place photo here stamp from our action stamp set. And this way, whoever gets this, if they wanna turn it into a recipe album, they, they can. If they wanna turn it into a family photo album, they certainly can, but they'll know what those spots are for. Now let's run through and do one page at a time. What I'm gonna do is glue this white piece to the black piece. Now let me tell you something. If I were making this for myself, like if I were going to be decorating this, I wouldn't be adding this white piece. I don't see a need for it because I know where to put the photos. But if you're gonna give this as a gift, it's a good idea to add this white piece on here and another thing that's a really good idea, and I'll show you real quick, let me get this glued down, is to just take a pencil and tell them the size of this area. And I happen to know that it's three and one fourth by three and three fourths. So I can take my pencil and I can just write three and one fourth by three and three fourths. And it's in pencil so they can erase it. They'll cover it up with a photo anyway, but that way they'll know what size photo to put there, okay? And nowadays with all the ways of printing photos, you can get photos in any size. So, I mean, this is easy enough. You can print them out with your phone, print them out on your computer, what have you. And I'm gonna put all my pieces kind of in this little corner because I'm gonna decorate on this side. 
Now, again, if it were a recipe album, I would want to make myself a little place to put the name, maybe even just use a punch or something like that to put the name of the recipe inside here. And if it were a recipe album, I would take a photo of whatever recipe is on this side of my card and put it here. Because to me, this like is a perfect two-page, two-sided recipe. You put one recipe here and one recipe here and then the photo of it there. All right, so again, I want to do this. I want to flip this this way, okay? So I know I'm putting this in the right spot. So what I want to do now is work on the cover. I'm always very leery that I might use some of my favorite pieces to decorate inside the album that I might want on the outside. So I like to do the cover before I do the inside with decorations. So what I've done is I've gone to the cut aparts. This is one set. You also have this set. Oh my goodness, that is so cute. Um, I like to look through and see what catches my eye. And oh, these are really cute too. Hmm. And then these, oh, I like this piece. That would be cute. That's cute. And then the stickers. There may be something here that I just have to have on the front. I don't know. I think I really like this little sign right here. I think I may have to use him in some way. So let's see how we can incorporate him. So I started with these two pieces. This is one of the little strip cut aparts um, from the pack. I know I want it at the bottom and I want to glue it directly down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that top piece. I'm going to play with stickers, I think. I think that'll be really cute. So let me put this down here at the bottom. Just like that. And then I'm going to poke that hole. Because you never know when you're going to cover up both sides and not be able to see it. So let's just go ahead and get it poked. Okay, so our hole is back. I'm thinking I may cut this out like to the sign to make it look like a sign. Let's do that. It won't hurt anything. It's not a May May project if I don't fussy cut, right? Let's even try to kind of bubble cut it so I don't lose any of the, um, the craft around the edge. I like that border. So I'm thinking this guy over here, now it's going to need something behind it to make it pop. So let's see what we're going to do there. So I just got one of the dark green pieces out of the paper pack and glued this down to it. And I'm just gonna go around and do the same cut I did on the image itself and give myself a little border. Anytime you have a very busy background like this, it's good to add these little border pieces because it'll help your images to really pop off the page. Sometimes they'll just kind of sink into the background if you're not careful. And this is a good way to let them pop off. So now this guy is gonna live up here, but I'm gonna pop him up on some foam but it needs something here and maybe there. I don't know. Let's keep playing. This piece is from that same strip cut apart. I'm going to cut this to where it just says Merry Christmas. I'm going to cut it kind of tight on the words. I mean, really tight right there. And see if I can use this as the strip in between those two pieces. So if I put this here, it'll say Merry Christmas on the front, which is super cute. Love that. Okay. Good thing to put in the middle there. So you guys might have seen that I got a gift today in my live show and this twine was in it. I'm going to reuse that twine. So the stickers have these little pennants in them and I always love to use these. I think they're kind of cute. So what I'm going to do is lay this twine at the top, kind of at an angle, something like this. I want there to be a pretty good bit of it on here. Let me find a good smooth piece, something like that. And then let me see what the longest pennant is. I think it's this little guy. And I just wanna make sure I'm leaving myself room because I wanna put these little pennants going right there. I think that'll be cute in the background. I think that'll work. We're gonna go for it, okay? So what I'm gonna do is run right here underneath. I'm gonna lift this up a little bit come right underneath and just run a little curve of glue. Whoops, I picked up my twine. Run a little curve of glue just like this, wherever I want that to go. 
and then I'm going to stick that twine in that curve and kind of let the glue catch it. It doesn't have to be like a super curve because I'm going to be hanging all those little pennants off of it anyway. So there is that. I'll let that dry for a second, then I'll cut it away. And I'm going to go ahead and start placing these guys. I may have too many here to hang, but we'll see. But this guy in the middle, just like so. And I'm not popping them up because I'm going to pop the sign up. So I'm just taking that right to the little banner. That actually worked out really well. I think that's cute right there. I'll probably come back and put little, put little bows. I'm going to cut these pieces off. So I got my foam on the back of this guy and he's gonna go somewhere over here like so. Cute, cute, cute. So our little banners are going behind there. There he is. Now I wanna add something here on top of him. Okay, first things first, I'm gonna cut some foam here. I'm gonna put on the back of a gingerbread man sticker that I found on the back of the, um, or on the sticker sheet. I think this will be cute. I don't know, I'm just gonna layer up and see what happens. Just see where it goes. Notice that I'm not um, I'm not using powder on the back of these. You can, but I'm not gonna stress about it. I'm gonna cover them mostly in foam anyway, so I'm not gonna worry too much about that. All right, and what I'm planning to do with him is kind of put him at an angle here. Something like that. Stick him down there, he's so cute. And then I've got this snowflake, and I don't know if I wanna put it here or maybe over here beside him, or down here. I don't know, maybe here. I think it looks cute there. Let me put some foam on it. All right, so I'm gonna layer that over with a little bit of foam, like so. That's looking cute, that's looking cute. Okay, and now I've got one more sticker I wanna use on the other side. This little cupcake is so cute. And I think I'm just gonna put it right here, like so, and let it hang off the edge. It's fine if it does. And what I may do, since it's gonna hang off the edge a little bit, is flip this over and powder that little bit. So if it touches anything, it won't stick. This is just my powder tool. That's what I used to powder my stickers with. Look, that's very cute, huh? Maybe some more? I don't know. I'm really wanting to layer up. I think I wanna add some things to this little twine piece and there's some really cute little stickers on here. I may just stick some of those up there. Okay, I'll admit it. I'm being a little bit wacky with this one, but I'm putting little bits of foam onto these little tiny um, holly berries and I'm gluing them to the to the cover on one side and to the twine on another. See that? So I can have these little holly berries. I just laid them out and then I could decide how much foam I needed. And listen, it's tiny and I'm really, really pushing it here. <laughs> Getting my fingers to work this tiny is rough. I did it, I'm shocked. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue on there. And then I'm gonna place this where that little bit will stick in there like so. And then one piece sticks on the other side. Here's another little piece. I'm just gonna stick it right here. And then this little piece, I just took it there for a second. I need to add a little foam to the very end. You guys, the tiniest piece was the easiest piece. Isn't that funny? All right, little glue. Stick that up here and tuck that little foam in so it'll have somewhere to grab onto. And I think that's cute, just adding a little bit of something there to the front. I think that is fresh. I may come back and add a little bling or something like that. I think that'll be cute too. All right, so now to the inside, I can lay this like this. I'm thinking about adding a pocket. I don't really know why you would need a pocket, but it's not a bad idea. You might need to put something in there, I don't know. So let's make one. So look how cute this is. This is one of the cut aparts. And I think what I'm gonna do is glue this down on three sides and leave it open. And if the person wants to kind of tuck something in there, they can, or if they want to add a photo or anything else, they can. But I think this will be cute right there. I'm kind of taking a play from my friend Brenda's book. She always does this. She just does three sides like that. You could do four sides and make it a slide in pocket, but I think you have more room if you do this. So I'm just gonna, not three sides, two sides. I'm just gonna glue down two sides. But if I wanted to glue that top down, I could, but I'm gonna leave it open. So whoever I get, give this to, can have that spot, or I could put some cut aparts in there, you know, just cut them in there and you could use them for photos. So I think that's cute right there. And now let's go to the pages. So the first and smartest thing I think we should do is we should go to our stickers first and see what we can put here to make the decorating really simple to start with. So what I wanna do is go through and find some stickers that will fit over here 
And what I need to do, I'll show you here. Okay, this Christmas tree would be super cute right here. But anywhere it's touching, I don't want it to stick, right? I want a photo to be able to go underneath. So we are going to powder all of these. All right, so I've gone to my stickers because this is going to be the most fun part, okay? And we're going to decorate this edge. But because of that, because I'm decorating this edge kind of on and off of the photo mat, I don't want to glue anything down here. I want to be able to slide under the images that I stick there. So I am going to go to my powder tool and I'm going to powder up the back of this image and even rub it on my surface and pick up any of that so that I'm not wasting it for one thing, but I'm getting this really not sticky anymore, okay? So I'm getting all the sticky off the back. And what I wanna do now is I wanna glue this down, but only on the side that's gonna hang over the edge. So I'm just gonna glue this side over here and a little bit of that. And I wanna leave the free edge or the part that's on top of the um, this section, I wanna leave that open. And that is so the recipient can put a photo in there, slide it underneath, and then glue that down or just leave it like that. This way we're not blocking any of their photo space. Isn't that cute? We still have room for something here too. This is adorable. It says official cookie tester. That has to go right there. Too cute. All right, and now we're gonna flip the page and I'm gonna do the same thing all the way throughout. So you'll watch me. I'll just let it um, film and I'll put some music on. You'll watch me powder the stamps and put them down or powder the stickers and put them down. So now for the back inside, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna give it a pocket like I did on that front page, just like this. And that way, whoever gets it can put whatever they want in this little three-sided pocket, which probably would be like the cut aparts or maybe some extra pictures, or maybe they make a note of a recipe they wanna put in there or something like that. Now, you know me, I do not decorate the back of my album. I really don't see any need for that, so I'll leave that plain. So look, we're pretty much ready to assemble. Since this is going to be a giveaway, I won't be adding recipes or anything to it, so I think it's easy enough to know how to add your recipes, though. All right, let's get everything lined up, and you can pick which pages you want to go first or whatever. I'm going to put this guy in here like this and get my cover. My cover's going to go on top like that. This is really cute. Let me get my little hooks. Now, remember, I'm going to be using inch and a half rings for this one, but if you participate in our swap, we're going to do two inch, and I'll show you why. This is five pages and you'll be doing a 10 page swap. So you'll get a 10 page book. So you'll need bigger rings for 10 pages. Now you can take these apart and put them on one at a time, but usually they're pretty easy to attach on considering we did this with um, pretty thick paper. So there is the book itself. Now I wanna do one more thing before I give this away. I'm gonna run through and put ribbon on all of these little recipe slots, but this is where the recipient will write their recipes right in those little pieces. Isn't this adorable? Look how easy this was. You can make this in no time. Now I'm gonna tell you something right now. There is nothing I like better than taking flat paper and turning it into something like this. This looks like something you bought and decorated. Nope, you created it from cardstock and this. Let me run through and add ribbon and I'll come right back and show you what it looks like. So I thought I'd show you how I'm doing my ribbon. This is my bead threader. I'm just putting that through taking some of my satin ribbon and I'm just barely feeding it through because if you put too much in, you have to pull out too much thickness for too long. See how I can just kind of wiggle that through without tearing my paper. So that's what I'm doing and I'm just putting my ribbon in and then I'm tying two knots. I'm tying it once. I don't guess I'm tying two knots. I'm tying it once and then I'm tying it again. And that way it kind of redirects the tails to the sides. See how it does that? And then they will stick out from the side of the album. Now I use my pink and shears on this, but I am probably gonna go back through and let me show you. I'm gonna, so this is Fray Check. It's a clear 
um, like fray stop that you put on the end of your ribbons and things. And I've always been a fan of it ever since my sewing days. And this is what I do. And you want to do it after you're through with all your tags so it can sit and dry because it has a, a bit of a drying time. It's not too bad. The thicker you put it on, the longer it takes to dry. And I got those on pretty thick, but I'm going to run through and fray check all of these pieces really quick. Just let it touch and it usually just soaks into the edges and it will just keep those ribbons from fraying over time. And these ribbons are going to get some use, you know, because they're at the end of the pocket and they're where your recipe lives. So you want to make sure you get them good and protected. Now, some people will just, depending on the ribbon, um, I think if it's a nylon ribbon, you can just use a lighter and mist it. Or I mean, um, kind of melt the end of it. I don't really do that. I'm scared of flame. Not a pan, I'm not a fan of fire. You probably know this about me already. Um, so I don't really do that, but I do like this. You can also, if you want to, use some, just your glue, like your art glitter glue dries matte and clear. You can put that on the end as well. But if you've got the fray check, it's a good product. So while the fray check's drying, I decided that this guy needs a little sparkle on the front. Um, who doesn't need a little sparkle on the front, right? So here we go. We're gonna sparkle this guy up. I'm gonna use one of these size right here. And I think I'm going to add it right to the center of this little snowflake. I think that'll be a cute spot for some bling. These are um, sticky back, so that'll just stick right there. Look, it just needs some bling here and there. And then I think I'm going to put some down here in the little um, snowflake areas. So these might be a little bit too big for down here, but I think it'll be cute to add some bling. So there's some little snowflakes printed on this. So anywhere I see those, I'm just putting one of these beside it or either over it or beside it to kind of give me some direction. So there it is. That is my recipe or mini album. It can be any album you want. I did mine in a cooking theme or a recipe theme, and I think it is so cute. I think it turned out perfect. I think the recipient's really going to love this. And remember, if you want to win it, all you have to do is put a comment in uh, underneath this video saying what it is you like about this album, and then we will go back through and do a random scroll through, and whatever we stop on, that'll be the winner. I will respond to your comment to let you know you've won, and then you'll just have to contact us to collect it. Um, that is it. I think this is so cute and so easy, you guys. Now, if you want to be a part of our recipe swap that we are going to do, I'm going to end this video and film another video all about the recipe swap so you can get all the information before you sign up for it, okay? And you do have to sign up to be a part. You can't just send in your um, pages. You have to sign up because we have to limit it to a certain number of people just so we can make sure we get it all done. And unfortunately, it's not open internationally. And that is just because there's no way we could get all the postage done and in time for you to get these before Christmas. So unfortunately, I will do something next year for our international folks, something we might do just a regular recipe book or just a, a mini album, which would be super fun too. So we'll see. All right, guys, a couple things before I go. A lot of housekeeping at the end of videos. Number one, please subscribe. I love having you as a subscriber to my channel. Number two, if you enjoyed this, and I hope that you did, give me a thumbs up in the bottom of the video here. Just like the video. And we have two places for you to connect with us now. One is our customer gallery. If you're making these guys, we want to see them. Head to our customer gallery and show us what your mini albums are looking like. And two is our Discord. I have it linked in the description below. So you can click on that and join our Discord. And we actually have a whole room all about mini albums. So you can go over there and talk to folks and maybe even show pictures of what you're doing. Thanks so much for being a part of this YouTube journey with me. Can you believe we've been doing this nine years? You'd think I'd be better at it, right? All right, guys, thanks so much. I love you ever so much, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.